time for the Longine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longine Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longine. Good evening. This is David Ross. Tonight, the Longines Chronoscope turns away from the man-made problems of the world to an examination of spiritual values, a subject in keeping with the holiday season. To help you find the truth, Father John Sheeran, CSP, editor of Catholic World, Reverend Dr. William Rosenblum, rabbi of Temple Israel of the city of New York, Reverend Dr. Robert J. McCracken, pastor of Riverside Church, Father Charles Howard Graff of St. John's Church in the village. Our moderator is Mr. William Bradford Huey. The chronoscope viewers have now satisfied all of the material requirements for Christmas, and tonight we'd like to explore some of their spiritual yearnings. And now, uh, Father Graff, if our average viewer tonight could ask for a spiritual gift for Christmas, what gifts do you think would be highest on the list? I think that men, Mr. Huey, are looking for a security. A security which is based not upon material factors, but a security which is based upon God the Creator, who is the ultimate security for all men. I think men want peace. <coughs> a peace that can only be found, and as, a, as exemplified in this season, in the Christ child, in the manger. The peace of uh, Christ, the reconciler. And thirdly, I think men are looking for moral fortitude and stamina in a time when men are not recognizing always moral values. So security, peace, and moral stamina. Now, uh, Rabbi Rosenblum, it's been said that this is a nervous age, an aspirin age, an uh, age of tension. Now, sir, what could you uh, offer to our viewers as some relief from these tensions of our time? Well, that's not uh, what I offer, but I think as I analyze the age, while it is true, it's an age of heartache and headache and there are a great many tensions in all areas, and the phrase aspirin age is a very, uh, shall I say, eloquent description on the negative side. I believe there's a positive awareness about these tensions, that people generally want to do something about it. It's an aspiring age, aspiring with reference to our ideals. And I think our presence here tonight exemplifies what the formula would be for to improve conditions. Because the religions of the world, we represent some of them, have in their keeping the spiritual ideals, the moral values that will make for peace and make for a better world. And I think if we can get together in a more constructive program, I believe that's one of the great hopes of the future. Uh, Father Sharon, the infant Christ has been called a symbol of weakness. And now, in these days, of these, to meet the challenges of our time, do you think that we need a symbol of power? Well, it's true that the infant Christ is a, a symbol of human weakness. But at the same time, I believe that uh, he is a symbol of uh, divine power. Uh, not only <coughs> divine physical power, I firmly believe that as God, he created the sun and the moon and the stars, that as Francis Thompson says, uh, he swings the world like a trinket as, at his wrist. But uh, more importantly, he is a possessor of infinite moral power. And I do firmly believe that uh, uh, his uh, edicts as lawgiver must be obeyed. And any ruler who uh, chooses to violate the natural law established by God must go down to destruction. What has the Christ contributed to the concept of human dignity? Well, I'd say that uh, <coughs> he constantly emphasized the dignity of the human person in his teachings. He consorted with uh, the off-scouring, we might say the scum of the streets of, of Jerusalem. But uh, at the same time, he showed a reverence uh, for the souls of those persons. And I think that uh, that uh, dignity, as found is in his teaching, has come down to us and has been incorporated in the Magna Carta and the Bill of Rights. But more importantly, I'd say that the fact of the Incarnation has uh, given Western thinking a, an awareness 
uh, the dignity of man. The fact that uh, God chose to incarnate himself in human nature, he, he uh, became one of us in order that we might be adopted into the family of God. And I think that uh, the fact of the incarnation, the fact of the birth of God on Christmas, has uh, given to all Western thinking a very clear awareness of the dignity of the human person. And uh, this Christmas, uh, does the Christmas 1952 hold ground for hope for the future? Well, I think it does hold hope provided we have humility. Not so long ago someone said that arrogance is the chief evil of our time. That's <laughs> very true. And I think it's necessary for us to uh, kneel down humbly in adoration of the infant in the crib. Uh, Dr. McCracken, most of us are familiar with Professor Toynbee's figure <coughs> of the human procession creeping up the mountainside rather laboriously. And there are periods in human history when the procession seems to make progress and other periods when it seems to be in confusion and retreat. Now, how do you feel, sir, on Christmas 1952? Do you think that we are, that our procession at this time is making progress or that perhaps we are so confused we may be in retreat? I know, Mr. Huey, how I would like to feel. I would like to think that we were making distinct progress. I uh, am disposed to avoid generalizations because while Toynbee certainly made one, I had a professor of history who used to say to us, never generalize in uh, saying it, making a generalization. At the same time, I, I think it's incontestable that, that things are going from bad to worse in the world. Uh, I'm reminded of what um, the late Viscount Grey said in 1914 when war broke out. Lights are going out all over Europe. Um, yet, I, on Christmas Eve, 1952, am not without hope because, after all, uh, Christianity is an optimistic religion uh, founded on a provisionally pessimistic view of man. It's when man realizes his predicament that he, f he feels need. And it's at that point, of course, that Christmas is particularly significant inasmuch as it means that man isn't left to work out his own salvation. Well, now, are the faiths represented here, the principal Judeo-Christian faiths, is it true that today they all are alerted to the great danger of our time, the danger of the all-powerful state, the danger of communism? Are they, do they all recognize the, the principal danger of our time? I would say that there's a deepening understanding on the, on the part of the uh, Western faiths of the problem presented to us by Soviet communism, though I would there want to add that we are deeply conscious, too, of problems closer to home and of the danger always of um, decadence from within. A point, I might add, that Toynbee brings out. Yes. Uh, Father Graff, do you feel hopeful as an individual for the human procession in 1952? I do very much, because I think that the realization that faith is ultimately the, the basis of the, the seeking for security and peace and moral stamina, that reawakening is going to have a profound effect upon all of us. I am very hopeful for the years which lie ahead, because I think men are realizing now there is an awakening of, uh, on all of these issues. Yeah, for us to have hope for free government, uh, Rabbi Rosenblum, is it necessary for us to have, must men have faith in, or in order to support free government? I think without faith we have seen that there is no free government. Because every single dictator that we've had in the past, those in recent years and those that are in power now, one of the first things they tried to do by force and decree is to take faith out of the lives of people. And I think you find that in the democratic countries, like our own, while there are some tensions and difficulties and disappointments, and we are in a grave situation, still there's always this welling up of faith, faith in God, and faith that life has an ulterior purpose, and I think faith and freedom go together. Father, sure, and you mentioned the great documents, Magna Carta and the Declaration, these uh, noble works that have sprung from the mind of man. Do you think that those could have sprung only from men who had faith? Oh, very definitely. Men with very firm, definite, uh, precise religious pr uh, principles. And is it true mm -hmm. that today, uh, when the threat of totalitarianism is over all of us, is it true that all totalitarian governments of themselves 
must first dis destroy faith or attempt to destroy faith. Dr. McCracken, is that true? Well, I, I, I don't know that they destroy faith utterly. There's always faith in the leader, the leader principle. I think uh, faith in, in, in God seems to go. Uh, whether you're thinking of Hitler or whether you're thinking of uh, Soviet Communist. Well, uh, the, the totalitarian concept, if you're going to believe in the all-powerful state, wasn't that what Rome feared of, uh, of, of Christianity, for instance? The idea that the individual man considered himself important, godlike, worthy to be free. Uh, on, uh, uh, in in the, the outlook for 1953, uh, do all of you believe that, uh, that there is a, a, a realization on the part of the American people of a need for more faith or proper balance between faith and reason? I think they're showing it, Mr. Huey, in, in all our synagogues and churches and uh, their way of life. They're returning so to the ideas of faith. And do you think that perhaps more more Americans will, will go to church, for instance, in the next 24 hours than did last year? Well, certainly there's a heightening of the religious element in the Christmas celebrations this year. I've noticed that. Well, gentlemen, I'm sure that our viewers have appreciated these expressions from you, and thank you very much for being with us. The distinguished guest on the Longine Chronoscope this evening were Father John Sheeran, CSP, editor of the Catholic World, Reverend Dr. William Rosenblum, Rabbi of Temple Israel of the City of New York, Reverend Dr. Robert J. McCracken, pastor of Riverside Church, Father Charles Howard Graff of St. John's Church in the Village. The moderator for this special holiday program was Mr. William Bradford Huey. The problem of selecting a gift of great prestige for someone near and dear to you is most happily solved with a Laurentine watch. Throughout the world, no other name on a watch carries as much prestige as Longine, the world's most honored watch. Ten World's Fair grand prizes and 28 gold medals for excellence and elegance, and highest honors for accuracy from the leading government observatories have made Longine, in fact, the world's most honored watch. Now, whenever you need to present a gift of great prestige, for a birthday, for an anniversary, for an important occasion, remember these facts. And remember, too, that you may buy and own, or buy and proudly give, a long jean watch for as little as seventy-one fifty. Long jean, the world's most honored watch. Premier product of the Long Jean Whitnor Watch Company. Since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Laurentine Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longine, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world's honored Longine. This is Frank Knight, reminding you that Longine and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem. Agency for Longine Whitnor Watch. This is the CBS Television Network.